Well, let's take you live now to Indonesia and to Jakarta, where Mr. Husni from the International uh, Red Cross joins us now. Mr. Husni, thank you very much for joining us on Good Morning Europe this morning. Uh, can you just bring us up to date, please, first of all, with where we are with rescue efforts on the ground at the moment? We've been supporting government a lot on search and rescue from uh, the Indonesian Red Cross, where we've had more than 200 volunteers and staff now on the ground supporting uh, the government with the operation. Uh, yesterday alone, um, 16 of our volunteers and staff were traveling to villages and in one district called Fiji, they found 34 dead bodies who were identified as students who were having Bible camping in the area. And, and Mr. Husni, it's not just uh, this, the sort of immediate desperate attempts to get uh, survivors, to get victims out. Uh, it's also the knock-on effects of this devastation. We've heard reports of looting. We've heard reports of unrest, uh, some of them caused by food shortages. Can you give us a fuller picture of how the country is at the moment, what state it's in? Yeah, the distribution of aid relief is so difficult at the moment uh, from that government and also aid agencies um, we, from the Indonesian Red Cross. The teams have been preparing a lot, sending um, the relief items, which include uh, safe water, um, water truck, uh, blankets, tarpaulins, um, a kitchen set, and also mobile uh, public kitchen to the affected areas. Though one of the ships uh, are is on on going uh, on the way now to Palu, but uh, we've been having challenges to access uh, road really because uh, the damage is devastated right now, and we're not able to get there uh, that easy. In the UK, Prime Minister Theresa May has unveiled her plans to overhaul Britain's immigration system. In a statement during her party's annual conference, she's pledged to end the free movement of people and reduced, reduce low-skilled migration from the EU. Well, let's get more on this from our correspondent, Vincent McAvinney, who's at the conference in Birmingham. Good morning to you, Vincent. Um, quite a bold statement from, uh, from the May government. Uh, what does it mean? What are the knock-on effects for Brexit and the negotiations there? Good morning, Belle. Well, this was one of the most contentious issues of the 2016 referendum, immigration. Some say it effectively just became a referendum on immigration. And for Theresa May, she was Home Secretary through years of migration from the EU, in which it peaked in the hundreds of thousands, and she felt personally responsible for that. So she today, along with her Home Secretary, Sajid Javid, uh, are making this announcement. It has been approved by Cabinet and also the Labour Party, so it has uh, a big backing here in the UK, and it will see uh, the passports of short-stay tourists and people from low-risk countries all being scanned and e-gates at the moment. That's just done for EU citizens. Security and criminal background checks will be done. So like the US ESTA system, uh, workers wanting to stay for longer will have to make a minimum salary that ensures they do not compete with UK workers. Successful applicants for jobs will only be able to bring their families with them if they're sponsored. And there will be no cap on student visas. So quite a big change to the UK's immigration system. We already know from the Prime Minister, she made it very clear earlier on in the negotiations that all EU citizens living in the UK would get the right to remain. That included, we found out last week after her quite dramatic Salzburg uh, incident, the statement that she put out from Downing Street, that that includes in the no-deal scenario. She doesn't think it's right that those people are bargaining chips. So quite a big offer uh, from Theresa May when she uh, did that to the EU, but quite big changes for people wanting to come and work and visit the UK. Theresa May says that uh, the British public voted to leave the European, border, uh, U European Union and take back control of borders. When we leave, uh, we will end freedom of movement once and for all. Crucially, it will be fair to ordinary working people. For too long, they have felt they've been ignored on immigration. So Theresa May very much trying to play to voters outside of this hall in the UK who voted for Brexit because of the feeling that there was too much immigration. Mm, and looking ahead uh, at the conference today, uh, we've got the former Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson uh, speaking. He's potentially going to attack Theresa May's Brexit plans, isn't he? 
That's right. I mean, Bell, even when Boris Johnson isn't here, he's causing waves. Yesterday, he did something a bit naughty. There's a picture in the front of all the British papers today of Boris Johnson running through a wheat field near to his home in Oxfordshire. And that is a bit tongue in cheek because Theresa May always struggles slightly with personal questions. She was once asked in an interview, what's the naughtiest thing she did as a child or a young person? And instead of, you know, drinking or anything else, she said she used to run through fields of wheat and annoy farmers. So Boris Johnson very much, I think, trolling the PM slightly by running and just having it caught on camera. Uh, it's in the papers all today, as I said, and he'll be coming back here to uh, this conference later on, and he'll give an alternate leader's speech, is what we are expecting. He'll be speaking not in the main hall just behind me here, but at a fringe event. There's likely to be huge queues for that, and he'll build on what he's been doing over the past couple of days. That 4,000-word article on Friday's Telegraph outlining his vision, ditching checkers and having a Canada plus plus supermodel, what he called it, even talking about building a bridge to Ireland to try to sort that crisis. And he's very much challenging the Prime Minister directly now because this conference does at times feel like it is an audition process for who will survive her. The feeling very much is no matter what happens over the next couple of months, whether she gets that deal through, at some point next year she could be gone and it could be someone else addressing this conference as leader and Prime Minister. Now let's take you to Russia, where Evgeny Makarov, a prisoner who was allegedly tortured by guards, is expected to be released today. The guards were taken into custody, but Makarov's lawyers fear that the man's life will be in serious danger when he is freed. For more on this, uh, I'm joined now from Moscow by our correspondent, Galina Polonskaya. Uh, Galina, good morning to you. Now, following uh, this story, other victims of alleged torture have, have come out and spoken out, uh, haven't they? Uh, good morning. Indeed, uh, this story gave hope to many uh, Russian inmates. They are breaking the silence and they are begging for help. And the lawyers uh, are really shocked by this scale. And they say that the tortures in Russian prisons became much more cruel, cruel in recent years. So uh, this story of Evgeny Makarov started with a release of a video. It was released by a Russian opposition newspaper Novaya Gazeta. This summit was taken in 2007 and we see 18 prison guards beating one inmate, beating his feet for 40 minutes. He is begging for help. This video went viral. Millions watched it and they were shocked. By the way, how calm those guards were and they were doing their everyday routine job. And so the lawyer had to leave the country because she received um, many threats. What is happening now? There's 14 uh, people under arrest, four more victims in this case, and it could take up to three years till it gets to the court, says uh, Makarov's lawyer. And she says that once he is free, he faces real dangers. Let's take a listen. I think that Zenya is in danger right now, his life and his health, because even though the prison guards are now under arrest, but they have relatives and friends and colleagues who still work there. And although the situation is that the criminal charges towards the guards are impossible to drop, and the investigation will go on, we do hope that they will be convicted. But I think that someone could approach Zenya, try to intimidate him, to threaten him, so he does not insist on harsh punishment for these guards. Well, right now I'm receiving SMSs from his lords. They are waiting outside the colony in Yaroslav and Evgeny can be released every minute. But it doesn't mean that his life will become easier. Galina, thank you very much for bringing us up today. Galina Polonskaya in Moscow for us there.